So Johnson was uh, aware of Eisenhower's support uh, in Texas. And of course, um, Alan Shivers, who was governor of Texas, a very strong and a very powerful governor of Texas, uh, with strong following, uh, bolted uh, the party nominee in 1952 and supported Eisenhower, and he carried the state uh, handily. So Johnson was well aware of the, of the basic political support uh, that Eisenhower had. The fact that he was a general didn't worry uh, uh, Mr. Johnson at all. Now, where did Speaker Rayburn? Uh, Speaker Rayburn did not like Eisenhower, uh, did, not, did not think any general should be president of the United States, and never got over that, really. <clears throat> he was civil uh, to President Eisenhower and got along well with him, but was never effusive uh, in his relationship with him or in his praise of him. Uh, I have always, everyone says that Eisenhower as a general didn't know anything about politics. My own view uh, is and always has been that anyone who comes up through the ranks in the military, as Eisenhower did, is by nature, by definition, a superb politician. And they are. By the time they get to be a four-star general, uh, they have been through the ropes. Uh, of the political arena, admittedly in a little different way from most people uh, visualize it, but nevertheless, uh, they are practiced politicians. And Eisenhower was. Eisenhower, I think, uh, read the mood of the country. You know, he came to office in 52. This was right after, right after World War II. This country was at the height of its prosperity, the height of its productivity. The rest of the world was still in shambles. They were rebuilding the, all of Europe, Japan. Uh, there was really no competition in the marketplaces of the world for American goods and services. Uh, there was no great demand uh, for uh, Eisenhower uh, to be too activist uh, a president. And uh, I think he understood the mood of the country and the times in which he was, over which he was presiding, and he acted accordingly. Um, he, he was also blessed, very frankly, with uh, the unique situation in which President, uh, which President Johnson, or then Majority Leader Johnson, and Speaker Rayburn found themselves. Johnson, by this time, was the undisputed leader of the Senate. Mr. Rayburn was unquestionably uh, the power in the House of Representatives. Uh, he, uh, he was absolutely unique in the hold and support that he had in the House of Representatives. I don't think there was, there was not a bill that could be passed that he didn't want passed. There wasn't a bill that he wanted passed that didn't pass. Uh, in spite of divergent views of his committee chairman, uh, any time a speaker really wanted something, he got it. Uh, I don't think there's a man in the history of, of American politics that had as much power as Speaker Rayburn had. Uh, he never abused it. He never used it selfishly. Uh, but unquestionably, uh, he could deliver. So what, what uh, President Eisenhower found himself uh, needing to talk to just two people. He'd get, President, he'd get uh, Majority Leader Johnson and Speaker Rayburn uh, down to the White House. They would agree on what uh, program they would support. And uh, he would rest uh, secure in the knowledge that uh, they'd deliver.